Okay, well I'm licensed, so now what do I do? Where do you get your leads from? How can you ensure you have a steady stream of leads coming in and therefore guaranteeing an income? I'm Maud Leger, and this is the Realtors Conspiracy Podcast, where we crack the code to real estate success. Learn from top realtors, entrepreneurs, and innovators about how to grow your business as we discuss real estate success stories, mindset, processes, motivations, and the key to their success. Check out our podcast episodes every Monday to crack the code to success for your real estate business. This week, I'm speaking with Dana Gain from Right at Home Realty. Dana answers the most common questions from new realtors starting up, such as, I'm licensed, now what? And how do I get more leads? She went through the whole process herself as a new realtor and wrote a book as well that is a great resource for new realtors starting up in real estate. Let's get to my chat with Dana. Hi, Dana. Thanks for joining us on the episode today. Tell us what is the key to your success? Well, thanks for having me, first of all, Maude. It's great to be here. Um, I think when I when I look back kind of on my success and maybe not just in real estate, but sort of my long career uh, in sales, I think the most important pieces are, first of all, everyone will say this, but it's very true, relationships. It's all about relationships. So when I think about that in, in the real estate world, I'm thinking about really a couple of different groups of people. One, of course, is your clients, so that's a no-brainer. But what are the others? What about your colleagues, your other realtors in the business? These are people that are probably gonna be around as long as you are. It's good to have those relationships. You know, there's that old saying, um, how does it go? You, uh, you never know how important a relationship is until you need one. But an even better saying is, um, when you need a relationship, it's too late to build it. So the key is to build the relationships at the front end and not expect anything in return. Just build the relationships, support other people, make their priorities your priorities. Because when you do that, somehow karmically, for whoever believes in that, it, it kind of all comes back to you, don't you find? Yeah, absolutely. And as a realtor, like a lot of real estate agents start in the business and think they're in competition with everybody. But really what you're saying is you're collaborating, you're negotiating together. So tell us about that. That collaboration really, Maud, is so important because, and, and, and I think maybe the thinking that you're talking about, it's coming from a place where they're thinking, well, I have to protect my client's interests. So that automatically means that I'm not going to be working with someone else on the other side. I have to be working against them. But actually, it's very possible, and I do this every day, where you can work collaboratively with the other agent on the other side while also protecting interests, not yours, interests, but your client's interests and their client's interests. It's very possible to do that. In fact, the better you are at doing that, I think the more successful you will be in this business. Yeah, amazing. The better you are collaborating, communicating, the more successful you'll be. That's a great, that's a great point. Yes, I think that's, so to go back to your question, what is the key to your success? First of all, I don't know that I've reached the place of success. It's sort of a journey and it's ongoing. And when I get there, I'll let you know. But yeah. in terms of, am I loving what I'm doing? And are there certain things that are contributing to that? All of what we've talked about contribute to that. Yeah, a lot of people say success is loving what you do, is waking up every morning and being excited. It's not necessarily the car you're driving and things like that. Right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. I love that. So you wrote a book about helping new realtors at the beginning of their career. Tell us about this. I felt compelled to write this book because there was no book like it that I could find when I was getting started. So once I got licensed to trade in real estate, I was looking for like a playbook. I was looking for a map. I was looking for, here's what you do first, here's what you do second, here's your priorities in the first month and the first six months and the first year, and then those shift to these other priorities. But all I really found was this massive 
pool of information online that covered everything from Google ads to marketing to email campaigns, postcards, business cards. I mean, there's there's a lot of information out there, Maud, but there was no single place I found that kind of pulled it all together and said, and now here's what you do with all of that information. I didn't find it anywhere. And so I kind of created my own game plan and I thought, well, I'm just going to throw this up against the wall and I'm going to throw that up against the wall. And every time I had a good idea, I sort of tried it. And then I kept track of what was working and what wasn't working. And by the end of the first year, I'd re- I looked back and I realized, hey, that actually worked pretty well. So let me go back and see what I did in what order so that maybe this could work for someone else. Because if there was nothing out there when I was looking and I looked pretty hard, because I'm a reader and I'm always researching things, if, if I couldn't find anything, chances are good maybe other people couldn't find it. And so I wrote this. Nice. Basically, what do you do when you get started? You're licensed, now what? Sure. And this was the question that I felt like I was answering in the first few months. Okay, well, I'm licensed, so now what do I do? Yeah. And uh, so it kind of covers all the basics. What, what are some of the first things that you want to think about and why is it important to think of those things? Um, where do you get your leads from? How can you ensure you have a steady stream of leads coming in and therefore guaranteeing an income, which was very important to me. I'm sure it's important to a lot of people, so, right? So, um, I'm not going to go through a whole lot of detail. It's on Amazon Canada, Amazon US. Uh, feel free. I think it's $11. Uh, it's not a big read. It might take you an hour, but it is probably a very good hour long investment because it will really help you map out in your own mind what what resonates, what could work for you. Not everything that I did is going to work for everybody, but I think the ideas are generalizable and I think that's where maybe the benefit is. Uh, to help the others out there that are starting out. Yeah, so the number one question we always hear from realtor is how do I get more leads? So how do you answer that? What would be like three main ways for you to say, that's how I did it, that's what worked for me? Well, it, you know, let's start long-term and then work our way backwards. Yeah. The end game for me, let's say five years from now, is that I don't wanna have to pay for the leads coming in. I'd really like to be living off of referrals To get referrals, you need to have a lot of happy clients. How do I get a lot of happy clients? By getting leads, servicing them very, very well, and hoping that they say good things about me after the transaction is over. Which brings us kind of all the way back to the beginning of the question, which is where do those people come from? Where do you get your clients from? Some people lean on their brokerage to get clients. Some brokerages uh, will do that. Um, It's not free, of course. Now, In my case, I wanted to be completely self-sufficient. I have a fantastic brokerage. They're a wonderful group of people, but I also wanted to be able to rely on only one person to bring in the business, and that was me. In order to do that, I needed to find a a fail-proof way to have a steady stream of leads coming in, and of course, that comes through automation. In my case, Google Ads. Initially, I tried to create the ads and do all the bidding myself, It didn't take me very long to realize that that is uh, incredibly complex and I had neither the interest, uh, the time, or the inclination to learn all that I had to learn, so I hired someone to do it. I have a company that does my lead generation for me. And so that's where where the leads come in and that's what I'm recommending in my book. Yeah, and then you nurture them, you service them, and then they keep coming with new business. they keep coming. They, they really do keep coming. <laughs> so once you reach a certain point um, in when the leads are coming in, you start to think, I don't know, it's really a roller coaster. This entire career has been such a roller coaster because it's like feast or famine. Anyone that's been doing it for longer than five minutes will say, I'm either run off my feet or it's completely dead and there doesn't seem to be anywhere in between. But um, but yes, it's all about working the percentages. You're going to you're going to have a certain percentage of success based on the percentage of leads coming in. Um, you'll end up with a certain number of clients and then you just go from there. Yeah. 
That brings me to think though, once you get a listing personally, how do you leverage that listing to make sure the client is happy and you get another listing and it keeps coming for you? I heard something, I don't know if it was on the radio or somewhere a couple of nights ago that really, really encapsulated this idea well, but I'm gonna give it a shot. Do all of the things that no one else can be bothered to do. You know, the difference between A service and A++ service is not a huge difference. It's doing the little things that people may not take the time to do. It's just going a little bit farther and doing just a little bit more. And I like to be very creative and do something I call surprise and delight my clients. Um, I like to call them before they call me. I like to provide information if I anticipate they might need it rather than them having to think of the question, ask it, wait for the answer. Anticipating their needs, being proactive, providing information before they ask for it. And that all of that kind of gets you to, okay, now I'm showing them houses and maybe they buy one. But then throughout that process, what am I doing? I'm communicating consistently. If they have to stop and think to themselves, what's going on? I have failed them. That's my benchmark. So I, I don't ever want them to get to the point where they're saying to themselves, did I get the house? Did I not get the house? Jeez, I haven't heard from Dana. That's never going to happen because I'm completely in the communication flow. And they, and even and this, by the way, extends to the agents that I'm working with on the other side. Yeah. I've had agents say to me, wow, you're a great communicator. I know everything that's going on all the time. And I thought, you see, that's what I want. I want all of that communication to be super clear because in my experience, having been a home buyer and a home seller many times over before coming into real estate, I can tell you that I came in with some very clear ideas about what I wanted to do for my clients. And the biggest one was I wanted to try to reduce their stress. Where does stress come from? Stress comes from, I don't know what's going on, right? It comes from the unknown. And if you can, I certainly can't take all the stress away from my clients, but if I can take a little bit away by helping answer questions and helping them understand where they are in the process and why this is a significant moment or not, that for me is a huge win. That for me is I've now done my part to taking the stress away. And, in, and I'm sorry to keep going on about this, but I'm very passionate about it. The other thing that I've seen happen as a, a sort of byproduct of that is that I've seen my clients get very empowered. I have a lot of uh, single women clients of all ages, some of them in the middle of a divorce, some of them just choosing to be single, something like me. And they want to feel like they are strong and they are making the decision at the right time in the right way, in the right amount. So all of these things. So so now we've gone from taking a little stress away to actually empowering them to feel this is the right move for me right now. And and getting that kind of feedback from my clients has been very gratifying for me because that's always what I wanted as the client. Does that make sense? Absolutely. It makes them in control, in the know, like, right? A lot of agents kind of feel like uh, being an agent is keeping it everything for yourself, but by sharing it, you're really empowering. It, it's exactly what you're saying. Yeah, it's it's a, I really enjoy what I do. I, I, <laughs> I'm sure you can tell. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. So I guess that brings me to what gets you up in the morning, what gets you motivated on your day to day. I'm one of those very um, uh, self-driven uh, sort of personalities. So I'm, I, I was sort of born uh, driven. It's, I like to be busy and I like to be productive, but what inspires me, that's how I organize my day. Nice. Um, I, I, I've t I tell a story in the book about moments where I'm feeling deflated or discouraged or um, someone hasn't been very nice to me, either on the phone or by email. And at the same time, maybe I haven't been in the office for a couple of weeks, so I haven't made those phone calls that I really need to make. So I'm feeling that pressure, you know, that, oh, I have to get this done. And I go to pick up the phone and I realize this is not the right energy. This is not the right energy to take into a phone conversation. I'm going to drag them down, not lift them up. I'm, I'm going to scare them away not because I'm not perfectly pleasant, but people pick up energy even oh, over yeah. the phone. So 
So I ask myself, am I feeling inspired right now to pick up the phone and call people that I don't know and maybe have them hang up on me, um, which does happen from time to time. And if the answer is no, then I ask myself, what am I inspired to do in this moment? And if I'm feeling that way, it's probably the solution for me is probably that I want to be creative. I want to do something creative. I want to write an article for my blog or I want to, um, uh, you know, come up with a new marketing idea or I want to record a video for my YouTube channel, something creative that I can build that I have control over so that I feel like I'm getting the control back. I'm taking the power back. And then when I'm feeling better, then I can pick up the phone and make those calls. And I'll tell you, the calls go a lot better. They do go a lot better. Do I spend a little bit less time on the phone as a result? I probably do, but the calls and the productivity is absolutely better. If the return is better and you're by that time you're doing something else that's also benefiting your business, I don't see how it could be a negative. How could it be a bad thing, right? On your day to day now, when you are inspired to work on those leads, uh, what would be three key actions that you do to touch base, follow up? What's your process? Well, I don't want to give away all my secrets, okay, okay. but um, I can tell you that much of what I do has to do with, again, being proactive. Uh, one of the things I realized very early on when I started in this business is I think with the, um, with the fact that the online shopping of houses has become so popular and so easy to it, I think there are some people in my industry that sort of forgot that part of their job is people find a house. So if in my list and I'm sending you listings every day, some may look at that as job is done. I don't have to do anything. But for my clients, I like to provide something a little more customized. If you've said to me, I don't stare at my neighbors, I'd like to have a backyard with a pool, a double car garage, or and then add something unique in there. Um, uh, I have a lovely client right now whose big thing is the double oven in the kitchen. So the first thing I do every couple of days, I will go into my system and I will the double oven. And if that check, if that box gets checked, I look for the backyard and then I'm checking the ceiling height and then I'm checking the flow and is it open and I'm, I'm imagining all their hot buttons. I'm specifically going in there and I'm nailing a couple of properties every couple of days checking the boxes just to make sure that I'm doing my part in helping them find that place. Because if they're getting 150 listings, they're not going to have time to go through them all. I can actually narrow the search for them and I can say, I found a couple really good ones. Here's the reason why I like them. This is the most important part of the conversation. Here's the reason I like these properties. I like the property because it has the double oven in the kitchen, because the backyard does not look right onto the neighbors. And I'm telling them all of the things that they've said to me are important. To be able to reflect that back to someone when you're helping them make the most important purchase of their life, I'm sure helps my clients feel just a little bit better about number one, they're in good hands, but a number two, just less stress in the process. Like, hey, wow, I, I really have a partner here in this and, and she's holding up her end and we're holding up our end. That is so huge. You're really listening and showing back to them what they want. This is amazing. So instead of sending 100 listings, like you said, you send four, right? But four really good ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're going to appreciate Here's why that. they're good. Yeah, versus right. scrolling through that. Uh, that's a waste of their time. It, it does. It really does resonate, I find. Yeah, yeah. It's building your business right now and it's working. So <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it's, it's working, that's for sure. Yeah, perfect. So tell us where do we find you and where do we find your book? We're going to put all that in the comment section for everyone to click on it. Oh, wonderful. Okay, so I have the book here. You can find it on Amazon if you just, uh, you can just uh, search by title. Um, you can also find some information on my website, danagain.com. You can find me on YouTube. I have a YouTube channel. And uh, I will say just a moment, for uh, the for those that are interested in seeing the videos, I also have them on my website. What are the videos? The videos are value add informational videos about just about anything that you can think of in the real estate transaction. And those videos are driven by questions that my clients have asked me. 
one of my later, my most uh, recent articles. And I, I, so what I do is I have a blog in the blog is a video. So it kind of like CNBC, that's kind of where I got the idea. So I write the article and then if you don't feel like reading it or you're just not a reader, you also have the video embedded if you prefer to, to just watch the information. So what I have is for buyers, for sellers, for renters, uh, the difference between condo and freehold, um, uh, bylaws and rules. There's, there's so much information that if you are a buyer or a seller or a tenant, you are going to find some information in my website or on YouTube about that topic. And I've actually seen a huge growth on my website and in YouTube as people have sort of started to discover it's there because this is some massive information, but it's stuff that people want to know. When I know they want to know because they are asking me. They're, they're, it starts from a question. I love it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing your tips and what's, what made you successful so far and where we're going to see you going in the future. So thank you for sharing all of that. Thank you for having me, Maude. It's a real pleasure to be here today and, uh, and I'm flattered you asked. Thanks for joining. If you know anyone who can get tips and tricks from this awesome episode, please share.